Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, live here from the Daytona Ice Arena. We apologize for the technical difficulties, but we are back live on our YouTube stream as Coastal Carolina with this shot goes right off the pad of Minervini. We apologize for bringing you right into the action. But 15-15 left in period number one, no score, as Ryan Marks takes a shot right into the midsection of Griffin Williams. And no rebound is given up there. Nick Gimmel alongside Andrew Shepard tonight for this ACHA Division Three matchup. Andrew, thanks for being here. Glad to be here. Looking forward to a good night. Fifteen oh nine left in period number one. As linesman John McGill keeps the wingers outside the faceoff circle. Once again, no score here. Five minutes into period number one. Starting goaltenders for Coastal Carolina is Griffin Williams and Max Minervini for Embry-Riddle. One more time, Nick Gimbel alongside Jordan Shepard here for this evening's matchup. Coastal Carolina comes into this match with a four and five record as they walk right in and a shot goes over the glove hand of Minervini. And the Chanticleers will go up by an early score of one to nothing. And let's go back to the blue line in the Carolina zone. Ben Malchaskin makes a good play to hold the puck in at the line, but he reaches at it with his backhand that allows him to get caught flat-footed. Doesn't matter, they have good back. They're good on the back check, but then Ben Malchewski gets back in the back check, but at that time the puck comes out in front and it's basically a clear shot. Max Minervini has no chance with that one. So 14-43 left in period number one. The Chanticleers have a one nothing lead over the Eagles. Embry-Riddle comes in with a 7-5 and one record for 15 points. And Justin Folks comes down the right wing wall, sends it behind the net. He was ridden to the boards by Wyatt Ebner. And a backhander gets over the boards and out of play. UCAC nearly turned it over at the blue line. Injuries and suspensions to get everyone up to date on. Injured for tonight is Jack Boken and Ryan Knapp. Suspended from the last game against the University of Tampa is Remy Hawtaw. And Adam Letart is also unavailable. So lots of different faces in for this lineup for Embry-Riddle. You were just talking, Jordan. Ben Malcheski at the blue line. That's his first time all season intentionally being put on the blue line by Bob Joyce in a defensive posture in the top four D pair. Yeah, and I mean, the thing is, is especially compared to last year coming in the season, we really focus on getting depth. And right now, the depth this year is so much better that it allows us to put players like Ben on the blue line, and he can act as a forward. And we're at the point in the season where, yeah, there's going to be injuries. There's going to be guys out. But right now, they're still putting a great hockey team on the ice that has a chance to win every single night. And I think that's the biggest difference from last year is the big depth, especially forward depth. 16 skaters and two goalies for the Chanticleers out of Coastal Carolina University. A very California Golden Seal-esque vibe coming from them. The teal uniforms with a darker gold trim, almost like a, a mustard color, a spicy mustard brown. Yeah. With, with white trim on the shoulders, arms, and socks, black pants, and black helmets as Brantley Miller keeps it alive. And at... On paper, it is a, a slow four and five start for the Chanticleers, but after talking with their coaching staff, it is an impressive four and five start. They lost games against a very good South Carolina team by scores of eight and three and eight to five, but those were the only big losses. They've played teams like Liberty, Kennesaw, University of Georgia, Georgia Tech. All of their games have been against top 11 teams and talking to their coaching staff, they believe that this is going to be the biggest test of the season for that Chanticleers team on a very young team, 10 freshmen on this team for Coastal Carolina as this dump in goes right off ahead of a changing Chanticleer, nearly too many men yeah, on the ice. Yeah, it looked like it. What a shift by Brantley Miller there. Billy Callahan trying to keep it alive at the blue line, forced all the way back to the assistant captain Miller and he'll move it far side for Colin Bridges. This one's deflected, so icing is waved off. 12.43 left in period number one. Chanticleers lead one to nothing. And this one goes right through the crease to the near side corner. Ben Solomon, his first action of the night, gets it to the far corner, and the shot they score! Turner Kaufman on the wraparound from Ben Solomon, and it's a tie hockey game, 12.29, left in period one. And let's go back 
to not this time the offensive zone, but before. Brantley Miller makes a good job holding that puck in at the line, and he starts the cycle. That wears Coastal Carolina's players down. They're able to get the puck into the neutral zone, but they're not actually able to fully get established and get that puck deep. The confusion on the change, puck goes off the helmet, riddles right back in on the forecheck. That allows them to get offensive pressure and give Kaufman the wraparound goal. And Ben Solomon, a, a senior vice president of this club who's been in and out of the lineup, big for him to get an assist on that tying goal. He is out there with Ian Betkiss, along with Jeremy Kerson. Fourth line out for the Eagles, trying not to, not to get caught in their own zone. Solomon with a turnover, and it's dumped back in. Minervini well out of his net to poke it to the near side corner. We are tied one to one. 12 minutes left in period number one. Bryce Corner evades a check, moves it up the wall for Solomon, who touches for speed for Kerson, and Solomon with his stick in the air is able to skate into it at the blue line. Leaves it for Corner, and it's dumped to the far half wall. Corner pinching at the blue line, and the Chanticleers come out to the neutral zone, but an errant pass will send this all the way down. Malcheski was in the area to negate that icing call. Malcheski run into the boards. Chanticleers have it in the attacking zone. 11 and a half to go in period one. And a pass out in front off the shoulder of Minervini. And the rebound cleared all the way down the ice. This will be an icing call against Embry-Riddle. So let's go back here. And the Bryce Corner is getting held in at the, at the blue line. And nobody actually came back to cover for him. That gave them the potential 2-on-1. -on yeah, the pass got by both the Ford and Ben Malcheski, but it wasn't icing. That gave them the offensive chance. Now the Eagles have to ice it. They have a tired group out there. Got to be responsible, making sure that you're covering for that pinching defense, but especially who's pinned up on the boards like that. 11:26 left in period number one. Shots four to five in favor of Coastal Carolina. Betkiss from the near corner, looking for help from Malcheski. He gets it up to the half wall, but that's as far as it gets before a shot gets blocked. And Solomon with another shot block, and this one goes wide from Justin Falks, who got the. Goal scoring started from the Chanticleers to give him a 1-0 lead before that was quickly taken away. Solomon bumped on his backside, getting it out of the zone. Goes in the feet of Betkiss, and it comes back out to the neutral zone. Top line coming out for Embry-Riddle. Adrian Deborah at the red line, dumps it in. Rims it far side to near in the corner. Betkiss, forechecking hard, unable to keep the puck alive. Mario Fulardi from the red line dumps it in this time, right back where it came from. Back comes Coastal Carolina, Justin Folks down the right wall. Unable to get around Ryan Marks. He's holding his stick there. And that's what the referees see. So play will continue out of the near side corner. Coastal Carolina, their fans travel really well. They came on the team bus and more filed in after the start of this game. This crowd, which is typically 90 to 95% hometown Eagle fans is about 50-50 between Eagles and Chanticleer fans. I saw somebody with a Coastal Carolina shirt on campus today. So their fans do travel well, so their fans giving it to the refs, wanting a call, but back comes Alex Fowler with a backhand centering pass looking for Deborah. His stick was tied up well by James Brown. Up to the blue line for Colin Bridges, walks into the top of the circle, loses a handle and has to dump it below the goal line. Ryan Marks looks over his options, cycles down low for Fowler. Top line doing work on the cycle. Faller all the way down behind the net, cycles to the near corner. Has an option at the blue line for Ebner. He walks to the middle, takes a shot in the midsection, and the rebound will be covered up by Williams. Good to see Adrian in front of the net there. And, I mean, that's the thing. When I played with, with, with Marks and Fowler, you know, that's kind of what I always made sure I do. I mean, they're speedy guys. They're skilled guys. I want to make sure I use my size, build the – build the cycle in the zone and give them an opportunity to get pucks to the net. Adrian's right there in front of the net. Any rebounds pops out, he's able to pop it in for a goal. That's what. That's really what they need right now. And Griffin Williams, not the largest in stature of netminder, so any body in front of him is going to be a big obstacle to see around in this tied hockey game, one-to-one -one with 9.24 left in period number one. And coming off of an impressive weekend split from the Eagles against University of Tampa, who did sit at the number one and does now sit at the top seed in the SCHC division. That's gonna be something to watch for as this season continues between the Eagles and the Spartans battling for that top spot in the table of the SCHC. And even mentioned by the coaching staff of Coastal Carolina, the Eagles 
one of the hardest road trips that Coastal Carolina is going to have to make all season. And that's saying something as they've played teams like Georgia and Georgia Tech and especially Liberty University, who is always stacked from the club Division One and Division Three ranks as this one from Noah Austin on the near side is into the body of Williams on a good recover. Well, yeah, and you're talking about, especially Georgia Tech, we played them last year. They were a solid hockey team. I mean, I think part of it, too, we weren't really ready to play that game. We had a six-hour bus ride, but not an excuse. We, we kind of took them a little bit lightly. These, they're a fast team and also a physical team. That was the game where Ryan, Ryan Knapp actually hurt his shoulder, but, I mean, that's impressive. This, this Coastal Carolina team is not anybody to be messed with. They're better than their record shows. And especially with 10 freshmen, they're learning every game, getting better, learning from their three juniors on this team. So the more games they play, the better they're going to get, just like everybody else, but more so for this Carolina team as a great defensive play by Malcheski on the two-on-one. And this one will not go for an icing call. It's punched up by the snow in front of the Chanticleer bench with 8-10 left in period number one. We're tied one-to-one. -one. This one thrown all the way down and it goes up on its side, and Bryce Corner will win the race to the dots for the icing call against Carolina. 8.03 left in period one. We're tied one to one. Goals from Justin Folks for Carolina and Turner Kaufman from Embry-Riddle. And ever since that goal, Embry-Riddle's been more controlling the play. They've been keeping it simple, getting pucks deep and deep working the cycle, and that's really what they need. Just simple hockey. That's what Bob Joyce says every single intermission. Keep it simple. That's how you're going to win hockey is hard work, getting pucks to the net. And you there's another shot from Ebner. Goes right into the midsection. And again, you have this time Jeremy Curson in front screening Williams. Yeah, and that's what's important. I mean, we don't, we're not going to have 50 goal scorers on this team. I mean, the thing is, is we just got to make sure that playing easy, simple hockey, getting to the net and banging home rebounds. I mean, that's where the majority of goals are scored are on second and third opportunities in front of the net. Callahan back down low. Good give and go. And Turner Kaufman nearly got it out in front for Kirsten, but now another two-on-one for Carolina. Down the left wing wall. Shot goes over the blocker hand of Minervini on an absolutely phenomenal shot from the Sean Declares. They regain their one-goal lead. 7.38 left in period number one. And that is the captain, number nine, Brennan Engtau, for his eighth or ninth goal of the season. The statistics are going to be off tonight because the website's got debunked being the first of the month. Everyone had to have specific stats in. So talking to their coaching staff, Brendan Angto, the captain of this team, number nine, seven or eight goals already coming into tonight, and he picks up his first goal of the night. Yeah, and that whole play started. Turner Kaufman's coming up the boards, and Mario Filardi knows that he's coming, but he tried to pinch and keep the puck in himself. He got beat. That was what created the two-on-one. So you'd think Kaufman's coming up, but he was still down by the hash marks, in between the hash marks and the blue line. Mario Filardi needs to actually step back and let Turner Kaufman come back to the line and hold that in. So two-on-one, one mistake. They got a long game. And just as we were talking about, Jordan, this Coastal Carolina team much better than that 4-5 and five record shows. And we just saw it. That was a phenomenal shot from Brendan Engto to give the Chanticleers their one goal lead right back on just their seventh shot of the game against Minervini, who is not off to the best of starts that he would have liked. Hopefully this was going to be that rebound game for him. Well, I think the other thing too is, I mean, they got the first goal and then it was all, all Embry Riddle. And there's just that one, one defensive breakdown that kind of puts you back on, on a level head. You gotta have a couple good shifts. You kind of take things a little bit lightly because you, you know, you're buzzing, but you got to still play responsible hockey, and it's moments like that that could actually wake a team up and help them out. So this game could go a number of different ways after that goal. Angto had that one taken away as Sakala gets dumped on his backside with seven minutes left in period one. Chanticleers dump it in from their own side of center ice. That's an icing call on the visitors. That stops the clock, 6.55 left in period one. A two-to-one lead for the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers over Embry-Riddle. Yeah, I, think, I don't think I could put either of those goals on Minervini. I mean, one was a point blank shot on a, he's basically walking in on the on the right hash marks by himself. And then, you know, two on one, he just puts it perfectly. I mean, he's the sh seven, two goals on seven shots, but it, neither of them I could really put on him. He's been playing, he's been doing what he needs to do. 
Top line for Embry Riddle. Ryan Marks bumps it in between the hash marks looking for Faller. And it's skated right back out by Andrew Cole. Cole walks Ooh. the blue line, and he's taken down by Colin Bridges. Legally, the official says, and the puck goes out of play. That drew a reaction from the crowd, but the faceoff will stay in the Embry-Riddle defensive zone. Yeah, he's just coming through with his head down. Bridges has always been good at lining guys up and didn't miss there, that's for sure. That was reminiscent of Scott Stevens. Yeah. Walking the blue Korea. line with your head down, and Colin Bridges just stood his man up just close enough, or excuse me, just far away from that knee to be a kneeing penalty. He got enough of the torso and hips to make it a legal hit. Well, that was dangerously close to being a kneeing penalty. We stay five on five, no penalties thus far throughout the evening. Adrian Debra with a shot stick to the near to the far side by Williams. It's in Debra's feet. He lost sight of it. Gets it back in the corner. Takes punishment and gets help from Fowler. A two-a-side battle below the goal line on the near side. Bumped up to the blue line for Malcheski. Sends it back where it came from to Debra. They play catch back to Malcheski. Sends it around the corner. Didn't have a clear shooting lane. And Coastal Carolina sends it right back onto the stick of Debra, who leaves it for Marks. Marks walks into the high slot, down low, looking for Bryce Corner on a good play from the rookie defenseman creeping in from his right point. Fowler picks up the loose change in the near corner. Has no help below the goal line, taking punishment from two teal jerseys. Fowler head, headlocks a man, and the back official it. in the neutral zone is going to get Alex Fowler on the holding penalty. I'm not sure if they're going to get the Chanticleer player down low for the extra tiny little cross checks on the, on the retaliation, or if they're just going to grab Fowler for the initial hold. Very uncharacteristic of Alex Fowler just losing his cool that early in the game. And it is going to be the only penalty against Embry-Riddle, so Alex Fowler will sit for two minutes and a fresh two-minute power play for the Chanticleers. Yeah, I don't get that call. I mean, yeah, he's holding him behind the net, but he's getting held on the ice in the first place. I think he's just trying to hold, stick his ground. I think both guys should be going or nobody should be going. Don't pick a side. And I believe that's what David Lytle is protesting as the puck gets dropped regardless of the conversation that a player and official is having. And the Chanticleers set up. And it's nearly taken away by Lytle, but it goes right through him. Coastal Carolina at the near blue line. Taylor into the middle, and a shot goes into the midsection. As Cameron Tucker was screening Minervini in front, shot from the top of the blue line came from Angtau, who already has one goal this game. It is a Chanticleer lead 2-1 to one over the Eagles with 5.26 left in period number one. Minute 44 left in Eagle penalty kill time. Face-off glove hand side of Minervini on the near side circle. Chanticleers win it up to the blue line. And they will move it to the far side circle. Walking in, shot over the crossbar, rims around the glass, stays in play, and it gets bounced out to the neutral zone for Lytle. Two on one if they hurry. Lytle walks in, shoots, and it goes off the stick of Griffin Williams, who stuck with the play nicely. A two on one was developing as Noah Austin jumped into the play. And smartly, David Lytle backs out, allows Austin to battle hard, one on three, keeping the puck down low. And Coastal Carolina sets up behind their own net. Angtau has no option to his left, so he will wait for Tucker to get into that left slot. Bumps it to the near side anyways for Folks. Now off the far boards for Tucker, walks into the attacking zone. 55 seconds of power play time. Austin can't clear it out. Odd man situation for Chanticleers. Near side circle, no one-timer was had. He'll send this one through, and good positional save for Minervini as there was an array of players in front of him. Yeah, the D's doing a good job of clearing guys out in front of the net. They're running an umbrella power play. They got two guys in front of the net, but no has to get that puck out of the zone. But good heads up play by David Lytle on that two-on-one. The fencer goes down. He just waits that extra half second to get that shot on net. 4.25 left in period. One still 43 seconds of Coastal Carolina power play time. Kenny Ferrara in for this faceoff for the visitors. With a little help, he nearly won it back, but it's taken by Kaufman, sent far side for Kerson. Kerson over the blue line, has it knocked away from him, gets it back, and he will be knocked off the play in the far circle. Chanticleers take over in their own end. Left behind the net for Engto. Again, no option on his right this time. Kerson not forcing the issue allows the Chanticleers to set up their power play breakout. Angtau 
over the blue line. Nice he will find Vanderveen walking into the slot, and it goes over the crossbar. Minervini was flailing at it anyways. Five seconds until we're back to five-on-five five play. And those are the penalties that you really make sure that you kill off, especially for your team. You know, you're winning, but you're fighting in the corner. Offensive zone penalties are tough to take in general. Good job by the Eagles to kill that one off. Minervini nearly lost it in the crease, and he gets a glove back on it. What should have been a routine cover-up for the Eagles netminder turned into a very dangerous situation. Luckily, Embry-Riddle got it out to the neutral zone. Kaufman, the intended target on that errant pass, allows Deshaun to Clares to get back to their attacking end. For Folks, into the near side corner. Dealing with the pressure of Bryce Corner. 3.06 left in period one. Chanticleers lead two to one. Centering pass, and it goes off the body of Minervini, and he will cover this one up with three minutes exactly left in the opening frame. Shots tied at 10. Coastal Carolina leads two to one. So you gotta get a big penalty kill, but that doesn't mean that just because you have the extra guy on the ice, you can kind of sit back like you were on the penalty kill. You gotta get in there and make sure you're fighting in the corner and winning those battles. Face off on the near side circle again. Glove hand side of the Eagles netminder. Back to five on five play. Chanticleers 0 for 1 on their power play chances throughout the evening. Corner up for Debra on the right wing hash marks. Soft centering pass luckily got to Ryan Marks, the intended target. Marks knocked off the puck but gets it back in the near side corner, evading the hip check. Now Faller, near side hash marks, far side for corner, walks in. Centering pass for Marks and it's loose in the crease and dumped out to the neutral zone. Chanta clears with good defensive effort, get it out to neutral ice. Good response shift here from this first line. Brian Marks will hack it away for Alex Faller. Back down low for Marks, below the goal line. Stick move gets him to the far corner and he fans on the backhand pass and Carolina gets it to neutral ice. Malcheski in the neutral zone. Right back where it came from, doing his job, dumping it in, allowing his forwards to forecheck. Carolina up the right wing wall and it's dumped out around corner. Now another two on one. Ferrara walking in, a backhander, he fanned on it. Minervini may have gotten a stick on it to help it to the corner. Now Noah Austin will leave it for Fowler who streaks down the left wing wall. Move gets him into the center of the neutral zone and over the blue line on the near side, onside play. Fowler centering pass, Usiak is there and a centering pass that he didn't get all of it. It will be covered up by Williams with 1.38 left in period one. And it was a good play by Alex Fowler in the neutral zone to actually get that puck in the zone. But the Carolina defenseman Cameron Tucker has to put the body on him. He was able to reach around him with his stick and poke the puck past him. Good job by Fowler to recognize that, but Tucker's got to be better on that on the defensive side of the puck. Face-off win by the Eagles up for Bridges. His shot gets deflected to the far corner by Andrew Cole. Back down low for Noah Austin. Austin forced to the far corner again. Cycles back down low looking for UCEC and it's intercepted but given right back to David Lytle. Lytle at the top of the blue line, sends a shot through, may have been deflected by UCEC, but Williams got the better piece of it, sent it behind the net. Lytle on the intercept on the two-a-side battle in the near corner. Comes out to the hash marks with it. Looks over his options, backhands it to the far side for Bridges. Bridges with a shot deflected, rebound is there, covered up, loose puck now up in the top of the crease, turnaround shot by UCEC, goes wide of the near post. Bridges evades a check, getting possession, turns it back over in the far corner, rebounded up to the blue line, good coverage from Lytle. His slap shot goes off the stick of Griffin Williams. Kept alive by Wyatt Ebner, takes space into the, into the slot, far side for Bridges on the rebound, and a shot that he fanned on his left in the far circle. Good pressure from the Eagles, 35 seconds left in the period. Usiak looking for a cycle down low, finds Bridges. Bridges gets help from UCAC, but a two-a-side battle on the near corner. Chanticleer fans wanting a cross-check call. They're not going to get it. UCAC from below the goal line. A backhander goes wide of the far post. 17 seconds left in the period. David Lytle from the half wall on the far side. Stick wow. handles in a phone booth. Walks in. He's tripped up. No call coming. And UCAC is cross-checked from behind and harassed, trying to get to that loose puck that was eventually covered by Griffin Williams. And one of the best shifts that we've seen all night from either team with seven seconds left in period one. Yeah, and I mean, that's two good shifts in a row since the end of that penalty kill for the Eagles. First and second lines getting it done on the cycle down low. Carolina had multiple times to get that puck out of the zone. They didn't. And 
it doesn't seem like the refs are going to be calling much. They're mostly just letting them play, which can be good and bad. They just got to make sure that they keep control of the game because it can get out of hand fast, as we've seen before. And you got to wonder how the referees are going to start blowing these plays dead because both Minervini and Williams have had bobble covers. They haven't exactly had the best handles all night, so I'm assuming the referees are going to have very lenient whistles for the rest of the night, not knowing how these goalies are going to be able to cover these pucks up as .3 seconds gets off this clock on the false start on the faceoff. Eagles with the faceoff win, but it's given right to the Chanticleers, and they send it all the way down the ice for the end of period number one. Coastal Carolina leads by a score of 2-1, to one. goals from Angtau and Folk. And the Embry-Riddle goal from Turner Kaufman to tie it up. But Coastal Carolina will go into the locker room leading by a goal. Embry-Riddle, though, leading on the shot clock 15 to 10. And Jordan, it was good, bad, and ugly throughout this first period for the Eagles. Yeah, and I mean, it, it, it was kind of back and forth, but I think the Eagles really need to focus on, and they did towards the end of that period, It's making sure that they're being responsible on the back check. There were lots of two-on-ones that were from the defenseman pinching and a forward not covering for him was good at the end of the period. David Lytle multiple times when Bridges was in the corner was at the blue line for him. That's the kind of play that they need. need. I'm sure they're going to talk about that at the intermission. And we will be back for the start of period number two between the Chanticleers and Eagles here on the Embry-Riddle Broadcast Network.
Back for the start of period number two here between the visiting Coastal Carolina University Chanticleers and the hometown Embry-Riddle Eagles. Nick Gimble alongside Jordan Shepard here for the start of the second frame. And Jordan, Coastal Carolina, a record of four and five, not showing their record at all. They come into the second period leading two to one. Yeah, and they've been really good at picking up on the Eagles. Real defensive mistakes. They've been capitalizing on their chances. I mean, I think for the majority of that period, it was an Eagles advantage. They're cycling the puck, getting pucks to the net. They just jumped on it. They had a power play. They built some momentum off of it. Eagles got to be better on the back check, and that's what Bob Joyce talked about at the intermission. I was talking to him after. He talked about how they need – we talked about on the broadcast with the two-on-ones. He wants the forwards to make sure they're back checking. But the other thing they talked about is – on the power play with the umbrella, he wants the penalty killers moving into a diamond, box diamond, to make sure that they're always having a man on a potential shooter. So we'll see if they get another power play, how the Eagles respond to that. Chanticleers 0 for 1 on their power play chances. Embry-Riddle has yet to have the man advantage. Embry-Riddle will be moving left to right across the ice surface for the second period in their home white uniforms with the yellow and blue trim. Minervini will stay in the net for the Eagles. Chanticleers in a teal uniform. Spicy mustard brown brown on the on the wrap of the shin pads, waist and elbows. But mainly that teal color will be moving right to left in the opposite direction across the ice surface. Griffin Williams in between the pipes for the Chanticleers. Top line out for both teams. Ryan Marks for the Eagles. Walks into the attacking zone, leaves it for Faller. He's dumped on his backside and turns the puck over. Out comes Coastal Carolina. Centering pass doesn't connect. Looking for Engtel, the leading point scorer for this Chanticleer club. And it's loose in the crease. Minervini never covered it up. Colin Bridges tried to send it into the paraphernalia of Minervini. And the Eagles get benefit of a whistle. Good job by Bridges there. You gotta get him off your goalie. Can't let him whack at him like that. Those are the penalties that you're okay taking. You know, if, if your goalie's gonna get whacked in the crease, whack the guy back. It's it's something that you gotta understand that, yeah, you might be going to the box, but they might not wanna go back and do that again. It's about protecting your goalie, really protecting all your teammates. It's what I like to see. 31 seconds gone here in the second frame. Chanticleers lead two to one over Embry-Riddle. Marks with a defensive zone faceoff win. Brantley Miller steers it to the near side corner for Adrian Debra. He was the second one to the puck, so the Chanticleers send it back below the goal line. Miller for Faller, goes through him. He gets it back on a carom, sends it off the boards for Marks, but it goes through him. Eagles would have had a two on one. That was a good look by Alex there, banging it off the boards, getting two on one. Kept at the blue line by Bridges. A high rising shot gets sticked down by Adrian Debra. High sticking is waved off. Coastal Carolina trying to get out to the neutral zone. They do. They take punishment doing so. And Brantley Miller sends it back into his attacking zone for the Eagles. Marks in the near side corner. 1-10 gone in period two. Marks trying to send it up to the blue line. Does so. Comes to the near side for Bridges. Has a shooting lane. Blocker save is made by Williams. He had a clear sight line. He had that top left corner pick. What a save by Williams. Icing is waved off, so Noah Austin has to send it. Up the near side, off the skate of UCAC. Good control on the pass in his feet. Takes ice with speed down the left wing wall. Shot gets deflected and Austin sends a man into the wall, getting the puck up to the blue line, looking for Malcheski, finds Lytle. And now the whistle is blown dead. Piece of glass maybe? It wouldn't be a game at the Daytona Ice Arena if a pane of glass was not knocked out of its stanchions. The whistle came from the linesman in front of the Embry-Riddle bench. And there is a pane of glass out behind Griffin Williams. And that was when Alex Fowler was down in the corner. And he was, I thought he was putting his arm up for a penalty behind the net, but he's actually trying to get the attention of the ref. And maybe it's, maybe it's both. He's talking to the ref right now. But I'm telling you what, it actually feels a little bit better getting hit and having the glass come out because it provides a little bit more of a lean. You don't crunch up on the glass. And now the linesman, John McGill, has to go all the way into the lobby, into the snack bar to request help in putting that pane of glass back. There's no rubber back behind the glass on that scoreboard side. Some of the Eagles players showing or er, expressing their discomfort 
in that scenario, moving their home bench from the left side to the right, where they used to have rubber all the way around the boards on the outside to get to their locker room from the bench without entering the ice surface. Now their home bench on the right side of the arena, on the, on the main scoreboard side, there's no rubber back there, so the linesmen can't just walk behind the boards and help put the pane of glass back in the stanchion. Got to get some help from people in normal tennis shoes. Yeah, and I mean, I, I actually was one of the guys that liked the bench being moved over because it was on the same side as our room. We have the farthest locker room at the end of the, at the, end of the building, so we get to just come straight out. But, you know, you are right. There is no rubber back there, so we can't just, you know, walk around. Especially if there was an injury or something, we just need to go to the locker room. we got to actually wait till the play stops across the ice. And this is very reminiscent of the scenario we had last week. And instead of a pane of glass just popping out, Pane of glass got fully shattered thanks to Turner yeah, Kaufman. Yeah, I heard about that. I mean, that, that's that caused a full half hour to 45 minutes of stoppage. 23 seconds left in the second period. The players didn't even leave the ice surface for 10 or 15 minutes. The officials were adamant they were playing the last 23 seconds without a Zam cut. They were wrong. We got that. We got the shattered glass picked up. The ice cut, and we played 23 seconds on a fresh sheet of ice. Had the horn blow and then restarted for period number three. Well, this is a much easier fix. Looks like they're getting that pane of glass situated in between the stanchions. This will only be about a five minute stoppage, but the narrative continues that it is yeah. not a college hockey game at the Daytona Ice Arena unless a pane of glass gets misplaced. Well, the other thing too, I mean, I was at a Montreal Canadiens game and, and Philip Deneau got a slap shot to the back of the head right at the end of the period. So instead of waiting out the, the 30 minutes to get him on the stretcher, like you said, they just they did the Zam and they added, you know, 30 seconds to the start of the third period. I mean, that's just what I think you should do. Now the holdup from the last game that the officials and I've seen this gone different ways. The officials in this Embry Riddle game last week, they made sure that it was only 23 seconds put up on the board. We played 23 seconds, then there was the horn go, then the horn went, and then we played the final 20 minutes. So that way. The visiting team at the time, Tampa, they had the advantage of having the end zone face off. But Coastal Carolina now threatening to strengthen their lead. They lead two to one and a shot goes into the padding of Minervini, no rebound given up. Good big first save for the Eagles netminder here, 17-48 left in period two. Yeah, it's been a pretty even game in terms of, in the period at least. Not many op uh, offensive changes. Both teams are playing well defensively. Sometimes the goalies can get cold from that, and so it was good to see Max making a save early on, setting the tempo. Turner Kaufman fails on the toe drag. A turnaround backhander went wide of the net from Burns. Now Callahan sends it off the boards. Geometrically for Kaufman, lost the handle on it, and instead of skating it in, is forced to dump it in. Gets around Griffin Williams, who's very active. Once again, we apologize for those who tried to catch the first five minutes of this game. We had technical difficulties. What everyone missed was that Griffin Williams was very active in the opening five minutes of this game. And you saw it there on the wraparound. Before this one, he was out of his net to try to leave it for his defenseman below the goal line. Up to the blue line, Bryce Corner tries to pinch. And Malcheski is there to skate into it before it gets to the goal line, so icing is waved off. And Malcheski sends it near corner for Bryce Corner. Up to the half wall for Kirsten. Backhands into the middle of the neutral zone. Turned right back over to an array of teal jerseys. And icing is waved off. Minervini comes out to play it up the near side wall. Malcheski didn't win the race to the dots. So Kaufman comes out into the neutral zone. Taking harassment, getting over the attacking blue line. And now another two on one for Coastal Carolina. Liam Burns down the left wing wall, walks in, shoots, and it's off the outside of the post on the near side. Minervini may have gotten a piece of it with the blocker. Turner Kaufman's got to get that puck deep. That's what led to that two on one. Shanta Clares, near side to far, up into the high slot. A shot gets blocked, never made it to Minervini. Up to the blue line for Brett Taylor. This one goes high and hits the ceiling. That will bring a whistle. And I believe after a deflection, it'll keep the face off in the Embry-Riddle defensive zone on the near side circle, blocker hand side of Minervini with 16-17 left in period two. Yeah, and you know, Turner Kaufman comes and he has that puck at the red line and he tries to just kind of get a weak backhand in his zone. If, if he sends that puck all the way, even around the boards, a two on one doesn't happen. The offensive zone pressure from Coastal Carolina doesn't happen. So little things like that that can come back and bite you later. Adrian Debra. 
getting his promotion to the top line, trying to get it out of the zone, fails to do so. Andrew Cole sends it far side in a one-timer blocked away from Wyatt Ebner. Sends it up the wall for Fowler and a three on two, developing for the Eagles if they hurry. Knocked away from Fowler, tries to get it to the corner, unable to do so, bouncing at the blue line, finally comes out to neutralize. And the Sean Claire sent it all the way down, one-handed by Mario Filardi, delayed offsides will be touched up. And a faceoff will come in front of the Coastal Carolina bench on the far side of the ice in the neutral zone. One more thing that Bob Joyce talked about in the in intermission was wingers on the faceoff. And I think back when Turner Kaufman had had the faceoff, tried to do a toe drag, wasn't able to get it. He has wing support on that loose puck. He doesn't have to do something like that. And that's one thing, you know, watch watch Deborah here try to tie up tie up his man on the draw, but that's that's important as a especially for pressure on the defenseman. If you win the draw, you can win the draw, but if you have a guy coming right at you, you gotta throw the puck away anyway. That's important. The Eagles need to make sure they work on they were good on that face off. Centering pass intercepted by Ryan Marks, sends it to the near side for Deborah. Lost it in his feet, and a high hit is gonna be called by Justin Folks. And it's gonna be a head contact penalty. Hands came into the face of Deborah. And so the Eagles will get their first power play chance. 529 left in period number two. You know, it's been a pretty sloppy period for Ember Riddle so far. So, you know, this could be the time where they can, you know, get momentum back on their side. Have a good power play, get pucks deep to the and get possession, get shots on net. That's kind of how they work the power play. Gets get Get the puck to the point, have the forwards go to the net for shots and rebounds. Brantley Miller, the defenseman for the Eagles, will be replaced by Turner Kaufman. Four forwards and one defenseman, a very offensive defenseman in Colin Bridges. That That is on the left blue line. Two-minute power play for the Eagles, and they win the faceoff thanks to Ryan Marks. Kaufman walking the blue line to the far side for Colin Bridges. Far side, top of the circle, down low for Alex Fowler in the corner. Walks up slowly to the half wall, fakes the cycle down low, back up to the top of the blue line for Bridges. Far side for Fowler, he's got time and space. Near side for Kaufman and a shot, he scores! <laughs> Kaufman gets his second of the game on the power play. 15-10 left in period two. And that's just great puck movement by you know the Eagles, especially with Bridges and Fowler recognizing that Kaufman is trying to jump down into the slot on the opposite side. So. That gets the Carolina players moving, and they're moving the puck up and down the far side, pulling those two killers, and then Turner Coffin's all by himself on the opposite side. That gives him just the extra second to get that shot off before it gets deflected. And what do you know? It's in the net. We're tied. A 2-2 two to -two tie game as Lytle tries to bring it in himself. Goes through the legs of Usiak and Coastal Carolina comes out on a one on three. Good back check from Kyle Usiak and help from Ben Malcheski. They separate puck from body and get it out to the neutral zone. Noah Austin hard on the four check, forces the puck to the near side half wall. And Carolina does not get into the attacking zone. Good stand up from Bryce Corner. Forced to be dumped in by Andrew Cole. Behind the net to the near side for Bryce Corner. Has trouble with it along the wall. He's taken out of the play. Liam Burns comes in to steal it away for the Chanticleers, deflected away from him. And a three on two now for the Eagles. David Lytle over the blue line, long shot wide of everything. Usiak cycles it back down low. 14-23 left in period two. We're tied at two. Turner Kaufman has both goals, one of them on the power play for the Eagles. Angtau and Folks for the Chanticleers as a centering pass looking for David Lytle was blocked away by Williams. Corner sends it. To the, to the near half wall. For Lytle, he sends it back to corner, walks away, walks around pressure, centering pass, it's deflected by Austin, looking for a toe drag on that deflection. Gets it back for Austin, bats it out of the air, and rebound corralled on the near corner. David Lytle, keeping it alive at the blue line, gets help from corner, back for Lytle, long shot off the backside of Usiak and pinballs off of Noah Austin, kept alive at the blue line, onside play off the body of Ebner. And this one will be sent all the way down. Caroms off the boards and not enough for an icing call. Coastal Carolina makes a three-man line change and this one smartly dumped in by the stick of UCAC. 13 and a half left in period two. Coastal Carolina, this one was gloved down, hand pass waved off as Kaufman comes in, fails on the toe drag, gets it to Filardi in the high slot. His shot is blocked away and a dangerous pinch does not work for the Eagles, but it's knocked far enough away where a two on one may be developing for the Chanticleers, but it's forced on a wraparound. Hits a piece of the boards on a Chanticleer fortuitous bounce and the Eagles are able to send it to the neutral zone on good back and forth action after a 
fantastic shift again from that third line of the Eagles. And it's good to see on the two on one there. Yeah, it the puck was a little far, but they had defensive back check support. Turner Coffin came all the way back. There was no chance of anything dangerous happening on that play. Wyatt Ebner off the boards for Kerson. Over the blue line down the right wing wall. Skates it all the way into the corner. 12.40 left in period two. Up to the blue line, Filardi a one-timer. Elbow saved by Williams. That was a rocket. And that was going on the inside of the near post. And Williams was able to get over and get it with the elbow and hold it against his body for a whistle with no rebound. Yeah, he's got a good shot, but I think the most important part of after scoring on the power play is seeing how the other team responds. Coastal Carolina stayed flat. Eagles kept that offensive forecheck going, which basically tired him out, and it's been going on since the power play ended. Top line right back out for Bob Joyce and the Embry-Riddle Eagles. Deborah doing his job getting the puck below the goal line. Brought right back out by Coastal Carolina. Brantley Miller caught flat footed. Back comes the Chanticleer. Centering pass all alone. Fanning on the shot. Turning around for a backhander was Brandon Angtow. And Max Minervini gets away with one there as Angtow was all alone in the slot. Luckily for the Eagles. Angtow lost the handle before he could get a quick shot off. And I think that was JT Comden that pitched that or banked it off the boards past Miller. I mean, that's just a good play. And, you know, Miller's, it's tough because if you're going to hold the guy up, there's that gray area where it could be borderline interference or not. And this one sent impressively over the netting, the new netting that has been installed this year. It goes just about four feet away from the top of the ceiling, so impressive that that one got deflected over the netting and out of play. And we'll have a faceoff out in the neutral zone on the near side right in front of our broadcast position here. Top line for both teams. Ryan Marks wins the faceoff. Takes ice down the right wing wall. Cuts into the middle. Back into his own zone. Toe drag gets him over the attacking blue line. Walks all the way in. Shot goes wide to the far post. Settles on top of the net. Taken right back by the captain. Up for Brantley Miller. Comes near side for Bridges, a quick shot, and it may have been blocked in front. I think that hit Alex Fowler, that was going in the net. Williams with a desperation dive and a stretch pass. Brings Andrew Cole walking in a backhander, he scores. Chanticleers get their one goal lead right back and that is a 21 instead of a 25. That is JT Compton. He has his first goal of the game and the Chanticleers go right back on top, three to two. And you know, this is just how quickly the game can transition. Colin Bridges has a wide open net that he looked like he was going to hit. Alex Fowler's in, a, in the wrong place, bad bounce, but it's fine. But Brantley Miller maybe was a little too focused on the play. That allowed Compton to use his speed and get to the outside and burn him wide. That's the second time that shift that Brantley Miller got caught. The first time it caused a two on one. This time it caused a breakaway that allowed JT Compton to come in and send it off the backhand past the blocker hand of Minervini. A three to two lead for the Chanticleers and another two on one. Here comes folks walking in, centering pass. This one saved by Minervini, the rebound goes in. I believe it's Compton again. We have a delayed penalty by the official. I think it's going to Sakala. Daniel Sakala talking with the official. Yep, there he goes. And you know what, that's just, it's another two on one and, and Ben Malcheski is trying to make a play on the boards. There's a bunch of traffic in front of the, in front of the bench. I, this is kind of a bad bounce. There's not really much you can do there. And you know, we talked about the Eagles keeping momentum up on the power play. It shows how quickly it can change, 4-2 now. If it was deflected after Minervini made the initial save, it is JT Compton's second goal of the game. However, number nine, Brendan, Brendan Engtow, he led, the, he led the line out on the ice through that fist pump line on the celebration, and he celebrated the most, so I believe it did not get deflected by Compton. That will be Engtow's second goal of the game, and the Chanticleers lead four to two, catching the Eagles flat-footed, and now Sakala in the box. Eagles on a penalty kill here in the final 11 minutes of period number two. And that's one of the rules as a player. You know, when it benefits you, it's nice, but I've, I've always never been a fan of, you know, if you get a delayed penalty and you get scored on, the penalty should be gone. 
Now taken into the outside of the net again, Brendan Engtau. Now Minervini with a shot to Justin Folks, who's in front of his face. And we'll see if anything comes from this. That's Brantley this Miller with his stick laying down on the ice. This game's getting chippy real fast. And this is the frustration of the Eagles and Minervini. We, we've been saying it all night, the broken record, Jordan, the Chanticleers are not a four and five team. They have a lot of freshmen, they're learning. They played a lot of good teams. So this is a very, very tough opponent for the Eagles and it's showing maybe getting the Eagles caught flat footed. Well, the other thing too is they're really fast. You know, they got, a, they got a lot of fast guys. They got a lot of raw talent and you know, they're on the PK. We talked, I talked about it, you know, in the intermission having them run that umbrella power play with the box diamond penalty kill. We'll see if the Eagles can recognize that. So it's really up to them. Right now, this game's just completely turned over. <clears throat> Good breakout from the Sean to Claire's. Here comes Folks walking into the near side corner. Up to the blue line, kept alive by Angtau. His shot loose in front on the rebound from Intervini and cleared out to the blue line, but not out to the neutral zone in a diving effort. Good job by Kirsten to get that puck out. And it's rimmed around the boards. Minervini stays in his net. These Daytona boards can send that puck anywhere at any time. It comes up to the blue line. Ang Tao kept it alive off the body of Kirsten. Now Justin Falk setting up shop. Saucer pass to the near circle. This one misses everything. Wouldn't have hit a soccer net. That was JT Compton not showing happy frustration. Either. 10 minutes exactly left in period two, 43 seconds of power play time for the Chanticleers. And Angtau setting up shop, waiting for the play to develop, sends it to the far side for Vanderveen. Vanderveen had it knocked away from him. And Angtau using his body, shielding the puck away from Kaufman, dumps it into the corner. Wyatt Ebner giving chase, trying to clear it out. Couldn't get a, couldn't get a clearing lane. And it's taken by Cole. Bouncing puck settled down by Kaufman, sent all the way down. No icing as there's still 10 seconds of Sakala penalty kill time. The Eagles have been good on this penalty kill. They haven't really allowed Coastal Carolina to actually get set up. They've been winning battles in the corners and they've been able to get the puck out. Back to five on five play. Eagles successfully killed the penalty and it's poked away and now the Chanticleers are gonna go on the penalty kill. They're, the officials are gonna say Alex Fowler was hooked on that centering pass from Ryan Marks. And that's all because Ryan Marks wins the battle behind the net. And Alex Fowler has, he's always been good at going to those open areas and you know they, they click. And especially this year, Ryan Marks has been really good at moving the puck around to open guys. And that's just a hard work and drawn penalty. And you know, this is gonna need to be the turning point for the Eagles if they wanna get back in this game. 9.05 left in period two, a four to two lead for the Chanticleers. Shots 19 to 16 in favor of Embry-Riddle. Embry-Riddle one for one on their power play chances so far. The same unit is out. Marks, Deborah, and Fowler up front. And Kaufman and Bridges at the blue line. Kaufman far side for Marks. At the half wall, stops up from pressure, walks in, takes the shot, and it may have been deflected by Williams over the net. Stays in the attacking zone for the Eagles. Kaufman sends it into the corner looking for Deborah. rimmed hard around the glass, takes a bounce for the shot to Claire's off a stanchion and gets to the neutral zone. One one actually, one guy to watch is Adrian Deborah sits in front of the net, but he's got a really hard shot. And I think that's kind of the hidden weapon on this power play. If he gets some open space, he can rip it. Colin Bridges with a shot, but no one was in front. Deborah was off to the races on the outside trying to get to the front of the net, but it was a clear sight line for Williams to smother up that puck with no rebound. 8.33 left in period two, 128 left in the Eagles power play. Chanticleers lead four to two over Embry-Riddle. And the key to this power play is they gotta get the, the, the penalty killers moving. And that's how they were able to score on the first power play. They got the penalty killers moving that opened up the center of the ice. Kaufman forced all the way back in his own zone. He will cycle behind Minervini and stop up in the safety of his own net. Has Deborah at the blue line on his right. Sends it off the stick of Ryan Marks. Finds Deborah, who touches for speed right into a teal jersey of Kenny Ferrara, who sends it back into the Eagles zone. 
Kaufman up the far wall for Faller. Near side for Bridges over the red line has Debra. Debra nearly turned it over again and Faller is forced to turn it over. And a bouncing puck settled down by Adrian Debra. Leaves it for Alex Faller. Has marks on his left. Elects for the cut back at center ice. Toe drag works at the blue line. Faller sends it into the corner himself, and he's ridden off into the boards nicely by Brendan Engtau, who has two goals on the night. Up at the blue line for Miller. It's lost in his feet, and here comes Coastal Carolina. Liam Burns on a shorthanded breakaway. Pad saved by Minervini. Wow, that's huge. He showed poke check and recovered for a big left pad save, bailing his power play out. And go back to the, the Eagles are spending a lot of time in the in the neutral zone. Coastal Carolina is clogging up that blue line. The Eagles like to, to carry it into the zone, but there's four guys. They're just going to take it and send it back down, and that's what they did. Alex Fowler was able to get around the guy with the toe drag, and I'd just like to see them dump it and chase it, and that's, that's what they've been doing all game. They've been first to pucks, they've been winning the battles. Why change on the power play? Use that extra man to your advantage. Take that puck out of the corner and get it back to the point. Got to simplify things a little bit. 7.21 left in period two, still a 4-2 lead for the Chanticleers thanks to the heroics of the left pad of Minervini on the power play after a shorthanded breakaway from Liam Burns. Still 10 seconds of Eagles power play time. They're one for one on the night. Well, this one quickly running out of time. Noah Austin with speed and space down the right wing wall. Over the attacking blue line. Two seconds on the power play. One, we're back to full strength. Eagles one for two on power play chances, but they still have it in the attacking zone. Ebner with a long shot. Near side for David Lytle and he scores. The initial one-timer he fanned on, but he put his body in good position and it rebounded off of his body and into the net for a good goal. And that's a good heads up play by Wyatt Ebner. He sees David Lytle by himself on the back door. And it does, at that point, you can take a one-timer, you can let it hit off your, your shin pad, as long as it gets in the net. And that's exactly what David's done. And he's good for scoring those kind of goals. He loves to shoot the puck but he's really good at getting himself in positions where he's able to get hard-working tap-in goals. That's why he's such a valuable player on the team. Technically not a power play goal as David Lytle wants more right off the face off on the left wing wall, shoots, and it goes off the outside of the net. Williams may have gotten a piece with a blocker. Not a power play goal officially, but the Chanticleers were not able to get all five players back in a good defensive posture as Lytle was set up for that one-timer. So that goal completely due to the fact of the power play, but it is not a credited power play goal for David Lytle, and the Eagles are swarming in the attacking zone, and that will force Williams to cover it up with 6.37 left in period two. And good on Max Minervini. It really bailed him out on that one breakaway on the power play. If they score, it's a completely different game. I don't think it's 5-3. I think that the... Coastal Carolina rides that momentum and good on Max and good on the Eagles for recognizing, hey, we just gave up another odd man rush, another breakaway. And they get back to the fundamentals of hard work and, and it paid off. Jeremy Kirsten fails on the cycle, so now the Chanticleers come out on a two on two. Angtow then the left wing centering pass, gloved down by Miller, has Solomon throws it off the glass intending for him. Icing is waved off. Kyle Yaffe rims it around the boards. Solomon knocked on his backside, trying to get pressure on in the attacking zone. That looked like interference to me. Ian Betkiss and Solomon get tied up with each other. And so now the Chanticleers come out on a three on two. Justin Fulks up top for Angtau. His shot goes wide of the near side post. Betkiss trying to get it out, can't do so. Top line out for the Chanticleers against the fourth line of Embry-Riddle. Brantley Miller sends his man on his wallet. Shanta Clares want an interference penalty. They're not going to get it. Miller to the far side for Betkiss. Solomon got to get on his horse and get to the net. Betkiss centering pass, and Solomon didn't make it to the net in time. Knocked his man down on the play doing so. Back comes Coastal Carolina. Wyatt Ebner in his own zone on the turnover. 5.20 left in period two. Jeremy Kerson dumped into the board from the backside. Oh, and now Kerson, now Kerson's going to take the retaliation penalty. 
Got to keep your temper, especially at this point in the game. You get railed from behind, and it, it, it sucks. It does. But it's all about staying disciplined. They're not always going to get the initial call, but they're always going to get the retaliation. This is a key point in the game. They just got a huge goal to make it a one-goal game. They've been having them. They've had the momentum. Now you got to kill a penalty, an undisciplined penalty. And in a tight one-goal game, Sean Sinclair is leading four to three. There was not enough there on that hit from behind to be called. Kerson didn't go down to the ice. Didn't get injured on the call. Yes, it was square into the chest, into the nameplate and numbers on the back. But Kerson, at that point, you said Jordan needs to just skate away, keep his cool, because that fourth line got ran out by the top line of the Chanticleers. Well, and, the, and it's like in scrums in front of the net. A guy punches you in the face. You, you don't punch him back. You have a, a full face shield on. It's not going to hurt. It's just you want to punch the guy back. It's just the little things like that that matter the most in these tight games. Chanticleers come up with it from the corner. It's turned over to Ryan Marks with Fowler. Two on one shorthanded. Fowler down the left wing looking for a shot. He takes it and he scores. Alex Fowler shorthanded ties the game at four with 4.51 left in period two. Well, who needs a power play? Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, if you can score shorthanded, I mean, you might as well just, if you're going, you're going. I think that's what's going right now. Ryan Marks does a good job in the corner, and as a forward, you're really not usually down in the defensive corner on the penalty kill, but he did a good job supporting his man and found that open space. He lost the puck at center ice, but Alex Fowler had good heads-up awareness to know that there was a two-on-one, and that gave him the chance to drive wide and pick up that loose puck and tie the game. Brendan Eng Tao setting up shot for the Chanticleers. Takes space into the attacking zone, setting up on the power play. Eng Tao centering pass, looking for Ferrara on the deflection in front, but it was taken away by the Eagles, but not cleared out. The Still 1.18 left of power play time for Coastal Carolina. The most important part after getting a shorthanded goal. And they're going to get a, a penalty here. The yeah. most important part of score after scoring a shorthanded goal is to not let up in playing strong defensive hockey. And they didn't. They draw they drew a penalty. That's what the Eagles need to do. So with that penalty, I believe it's a cross-checking penalty. The Chanticleers will move to 0 and 3 on their power play chances. After Jeremy Kerson picked up the initial roughing penalty. Well, so we'll skate for a side with one for a minute and 10 seconds with 422 left in period number two. And barring any other penalties, the Eagles will have a shortened 50 second power play in 70 seconds. And the Eagles have two of their best, not two of their faster guys on the edge for this four on four. Because Coastal Carolina is fast and they need to be able to combat it. So we'll see how Kaufman and Usiak are able to do against this coast, speedy Coastal Carolina team. Kaufman battling one on one in that far corner, gets help from Usiak. He has it turned over, now a partial three on two if the Chanticleers hurry. Usiak with a beautiful back check will force Engtau around the boards. Ebner helps finish him off as Minervini made the sharp angle save. Back for Bryce Corner, cycles behind the net for Ebner. Corner hard into the end boards, now the Chanticleers. If you can't beat them, beat them. And JT Compton just took a slashing penalty on Wyatt Ebner behind the play. So Minervini will race to the bench, it'll be five on four with the net empty. They shouldn't blow that. Minervini got to the bench, but the official down low blew the play dead because the player from the Eagles bench came onto the ice before Minervini got to the bench. I saw him pointing to the Eagles bench, and I was watching Minervini get to the bench. So I believe this will bring the faceoff out to center ice. The penalty will still stand. It should be an illegal substitution call. I don't think it's an, a too many men penalty. Correct. That should bring the faceoff to center ice. But you are correct, Jordan. There should not be too many men on the ice because the play was blown dead immediately. The penalty to JT Compton should still stand. It should be four on three. But we're not the ones wearing the stripes. Yeah, exactly, and that's the thing. It looks like they're gonna give him an elbow call, but 
So two minutes for elbowing for JT Compton. And that is what the board shows is four on three power play for the Eagles. But because of that illegal substitution from Minervini and the Eagles player on the bench, the faceoff will not start in the Eagles attacking zone. It'll bring the faceoff out to the center ice circle. We're gonna run three forwards, one defenseman on this four on three. Eagles, when we had four on threes, there was this one game where we had 14 power plays. It was against Florida Gulf Coast and we only had one power play goal, but we had a lot of four on threes, but all of it was just outside puck movement. There was very little traffic in front and there weren't that many shots. It was trying to get the perfect play. They need to make sure that they have a guy in front of the net, they're first of the puck, but most importantly, they're just getting shots on net. That's the only way you're gonna score is if you get pucks to the net. 3.36 left in period number two. We are tied at four. Eagles have a four on three power play for the next 24 seconds. Then they will have 50 seconds of five on three power play time. And then they will have a minute and 10 seconds of four on or five on four power play time. Again, barring any other penalties that may occur. Ryan Marks against Justin Fuchs for this faceoff. Marks wins it for Turner Kaufman. 20 seconds left of four on three. Kaufman, a left-handed shot down the right wing wall into the attacking zone, up top for Faller. Four on three for 10 seconds. Faller walking into the top of the circle, far side. He tried to force it, nearly turned it over and got it right back. Faller up for Bridges. Five on three power play, near side for Kaufman. Centering pass, it went through everybody to the boards. Kaufman needs to shoot that. 45 seconds of five on three power play. Faller near side for Kaufman, it bounced over his stick. That was a good look there by Alex Fowler. They're giving up the middle of the ice. They're giving up those passing lanes. Kaufman for Marks, down low in the near circle. Shot gets blocked, centering pass. It's kicked in by Usiak. That is not going to be a good goal. Kyle Usiak tried to kick it to his stick, and it went right through the wickets of Griffin Williams. But you know what? They're getting good puck moving on this power play. And it's been Turner Kaufman and Alex Fowler that have both taken advantage of those open cross ice passing lanes. Now confusion on the Coastal Carolina penalty box. Brett Tyler tried to come out thinking it was a good goal. And the officials are able to steer him back in, telling him it was not a good goal. So we stay tied at four, 29 seconds of five on three power play time after the goal was disallowed on a clear kick from Kyle Usiak. Faller for Usiak, near circle shot, and no rebound given up by Griffin Williams. Faller was in front, but not enough of a screen. 21 seconds. You know what, there's nothing wrong with that shot. They still got traffic in front of the net. I mean, it's, it'd be better if it was on the ice, but it's the, it's the right look. And you could do that 10 times on a power play and it's never gonna be a bad play. Another big faceoff win for the Eagles, but UCF tried to force it up to the blue line on the far side for Bridges and it gets deflected to the neutral zone. And UCF brings it back in on the stretch play. Nine seconds of five on three. Ryan Marks. Near side to far for Bridges. Walking up top, far side for Marks again. Takes a shot blocked in front by Fowler. That's his second blocked shot. And Turner Kaufman nearly held it in his glove for too long. Five on four power play. One timer from Fowler. Went through everyone up to the blue line for Kaufman again. Kaufman fakes a slap shot far side for Bridges at the top of the circle. He lost the handle and now a tripping penalty against Colin Bridges, but not before it comes back for Folks. He's hooked on the player, lost the handle on it. I lost sight of it at the last second. Wow, and I empathize with Colin Bridges there. Yes, his stick get on, did get on the, on the skate of Brett Taylor who would have had a clear cut breakaway more like he stepped on it. But it was it was way too easy for the Chanticleer player to fall down like that to be called a tripping penalty and negate the Eagles penalty or power play in a tight in a tied game in the final two minutes of a period. You know what? That's that's a good power play by the Eagles. And it was more the the four on three that they really took advantage of those open pass lanes in the middle of the ice. But then it, it was just simple and you know I feel for, for Bridges as well. Sometimes the puck just runs off the end of your stick. It was an aggressive PK by Coastal Carolina. That's why he was able to come free. And you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be a big 
big set of four on four here for a little bit for the next 16 seconds. 150 left in period two. Chanticleers will have a power play here in about 10 seconds. Bryce Corner has it in his, in his own end for the Eagles. Walks away from pressure, sends it near side for Noah Austin. Austin cycles back and the Eagles are on the penalty kill now. Hold on to that. Sent all the way down and it's fanned on by Griffin Williams behind the net. That will force Cameron Tucker out the near side corner, sends it behind the net for Taylor. Taylor into the center for Ferrara. Sends it to the far side corner now for Taylor. Taylor lost a handle and David Lytle will get it out. Noah Austin will provide the forecheck pressure on Brennan Engtau. Final 58 of period two. Engtau with speed through the neutral zone. Cuts to the right side of the ice. The left-handed shot tries to get around Bryce Corner. Can't do so. And he sends it 200 feet. 45 seconds left in period two. Chanticleers will be on the power play for the rest of this period unless they score. Knocked away by Bryce Corner and the Chanticleers get it into the attacking zone on the second effort. Wyatt Edmer skates far side to near, sends it off the glass and all the way down again. 26 seconds left in the period. We are tied at four. Coastal Carolina from behind their own net. Stretch pass finds the mark of JT Compton. Compton moving far side to near in the neutral zone, gets over the blue line, drops it back for Burns. Burns with eight seconds on the clock. Cycles down low again for Compton. His shot blocked away, down low for Burns. Burns trying to get a shot off up top, and it goes off the body wow. of Minervini, and the rebound is steered clear anyways. Now corner is shoved, and we've seen less called. We'll see if that gets added on to anything here. Does not look like the officials are making their way to the scorer's bench to give a retaliation penalty there. That was Justin Folks in there on uh, on Bryce Corner. But that shows you got to play all the way to the buzzer. Good job by Max Minervini. He knew how much time was left on the clock, but you always got to go that extra second after the clock goes. And it's plays like that. And we will be back for the start of period number three. We are tied at four. Two goals from Eng Tao, one goal from Justin Folks, and one from JT Compton for Coastal Carolina. Two goals for Turner Kaufman, one on the power play, a shorthander from Alex Fowler, and one from David Lytle as the power play expired. Tied at four, Nick Kimball and Jordan Shepard will be back for the start of period number three here on the Eagles Broadcast Network.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for the start of period <coughs> number three between the visiting Coastal Carolina University Chanticleers and your hometown Embry-Riddle Eagles. Nick Gimbel alongside Jordan Shepard here on the Eagles Broadcast Network. We are tied at four. And the Eagles against a four and five Chanticleers team that are not playing like they are four and five tonight. No, they've been really good, especially capitalizing on the Eagles' defensive mistakes. They're very, they're a very fast team. They're able to drive wide, and the, the, just the, you know, the bottom line is their their decor, the Eagles' decor is crippled right now. They don't have Ryan Knapp. They don't have Jack Folk, and they don't have Remy Hautau. They're, you know, they got Brentley Miller, who played on the first line last weekend, is playing D. So it, it's. You know, they're, they're playing as well as they can. It's just the speed sometimes is there's nothing you can really do about it besides just try to try to knock them off the puck physically. And, no, uh, they've been doing an all right job of it. But there's a little there's a few things that the Eagles need to tighten up on that was a lot better in the second period. We'll see how they play the third. Eagles have led in the shot category both periods, and they currently lead 25-19. to 19. Coastal Carolina led in the goal category 2-1. to one in the first period, and the Eagles were on top three to two in that second period, but we stand at four aside. Brendan Engtau with a pair, Justin Fultz and JT Compton each have a single goal for the Chanticleers. Turner Kaufman has a pair of goals himself. Alex Fowler with a shorthanded goal, and David Lytle as a, penalty, as a power play had expired are the four goal, or the three goal scorers on four goals for the Eagles. And one thing that I view as the turning point in that second period was the Max Minervidi breakaway save on the power play. It was 4-2. That was right before David Lytle got that goal in front of the net. And then it came down to the Eagles just had all the momentum. They Jeremy Kearson takes a bad penalty, not being disciplined, but Good job by Ryan Marks. Gets the puck right Alex Fowler, who's got good good awareness, and they're able to tie the game on a shorthand and goal. And now we're tied at four instead of a potential 5-2 game. There is four seconds of power play time for the Chanticleers. That will quickly expire and bring the Chanticleers 0 for 4 on the night, whereas the Eagles are 1 for 4. So the power plays are the exact same in chances. I'd even argue that they're two, two for four, not officially, but. The one-timer from David Lytle just about three seconds after the power play expired. As you said, not officially a power play goal, but as I mentioned just after that goal, the Chanticleers didn't get back in their zone afterwards. So it was completely due to the fact that the Eagles were on the power play, but officially not credited as, an, as a power play goal. Now nearly turned over to Coastal Carolina, now given back to the Chanticleers. And the Eagles nearly guilty of a penalty there as Justin Folks took a tumble on the far side. And icing will be called here against the Eagles. So one thing, I was talking to some of the guys at the intermission, the ice is not in very good shape. And that's what you know Bob Joyce talked about make the simple play. But one thing he talked specifically about, we talked about back checking in the first period and how the, especially when the deep pinches, they need to get back. But he really focused on back checking with a purpose. And you know, if it's a three on two, there's a four, or the back checking forward, the forwards were tending to go to the guy with the puck. But one thing that Bob Joyce said was, cover the open man, let the defenseman take the guy with the puck, take the shooter. Adrian Deborah hard to his point, blocks that shot for Faller. He and Marks will give chase on the near side corner. Up to the blue line, Ebner shot deflected by Marks, poked away by Griffin Williams. Marks into the center. Kept alive at the blue line by Bryce Corner. He sends it below the goal line to the far side for Alex Fowler. Five on five play, 18 and a half left in period three. Now Fowler dumped head first into the Nothing. board. No call from the officials. That is a textbook five in game penalty for a hit from behind. He doesn't like it either. He's talking to the official. I don't I don't see how there why there wasn't a call. Minimum 
a 2 and 10 for a hit from behind, but the USA Hockey rule book says a 2 and 10 is a hit from behind in open ice. Any collision from shoulder into the numbers, sending a player headfirst into the boards, should be an automatic five in game. And unbelievable how there is not at least a 2 and 10 yeah, power I mean, play for the Eagles right now. And that's kind of the way the game's been going. I mean, it's been inconsistent officiating some things have been called some things haven't and that can get frustrating as a player because sometimes you you don't know what's going to get called and then you could change Ooh. turned over to the shot to clears and a shot off the outside of the net 18 minutes left in period three coastal carolina up to the near blue line Yaffe with a shot, gets deflected into the near side corner noah austin has it taken away from him on the near side And it comes back up to the top for Yaffe. Can't get a shot off. And now David Lytle's gonna be guilty of tripping on the near side half wall. And the Eagles will touch up on the far side. So now instead of a power, of play. A power play on the hit from behind, it is now a power play for the Chanticleers. And that's what I was talking about. That The inconsistent officiant of what can be called or not called will change how you change your decision making on the ice. I didn't actually see if his stick got him or not or if he just fell down. But if you're going into the corner with the puck and nothing has been called for hitting from behind, you're not going to play that same aggressive forechecking style because you know that you're going to get drilled and nothing's going to get called. And then it, it's just, a, it's dangerous. And to touch on your point, the, the main highlight, consistency. The officials have been letting the physical play go all night. There have been collisions after collisions after collisions. The, the most important one that we've highlighted, the hit from behind on Alex Fowler, that didn't go called. But the stick penalties have been called all night. The Eagles got caught on a tripping penalty, on a light tripping penalty in my opinion. But again, that consistency, they're letting the physical plays go, but any stick infraction they are calling, and it just gets called here on David Lytle. As a one-timer gets blocked to the near side corner, off the stick of Turner Kaufman. Brantley Miller trying to hold it along the boards, working one on three. Wow, nice job by Brantley in there. And it's turned over all the way down into the Chanticleers defensive end. Behind the net, Griffin Williams leave it, leaves it off the wall for Engtau. Evades pressure. And the Coastal Carolina captain with a lot of speed and a lot of moves gets it to the neutral zone around Kaufman. Gets around Bridges, walks in, takes the shot. Big save by Minervini again, this time on the penalty kill. Kaufman with a skating lane, one hands it out to the neutral zone. Here's a two on one. And a shot goes off the midsection of Williams. Turner Kaufman with a great A chance. Loose in the crease and it cannot be poked in by Jeremy Kersen. And the Eagles are swarming on the penalty kill, but now all four penalty killers are tired and not wanting to forecheck too hard. 55 seconds of Eagles penalty kill time. <coughs> Angtau to the near side for Folks. It's deflected and now Kaufman at the end of his shift gets an extra burst of speed down the near side. Shot wide of everything on the far side. And Coastal Carolina comes back in a three on two. Justin Folks on the left side, trying to get around Ebner. Hangs on to it and allows his team to set up on the power play. Behind the net, up to the far side and a quick shot blocker saved by Minervini who's looking for his first win of the season. A big storyline for him. Eng Tao into the middle, nearly blocked away on the turnaround shot. Now it does get blocked, doesn't make it to Minervini. And now a long shot into the glove hand of Max and he will hang on. I like the play on the back check by Dan Zakal. It's a three on two, he's getting back. And instead of chasing that guy towards the front of the net, he stops at the top of the right circle and that basically puts him in position. And then I like the play by Kaufman. He's got good heads up awareness. He knows the defenseman is pinching. He's able to one hand it off the boards and get a good two on one chance. Face off blocker hand side of Minervini. Chanticleers win it up to the blue line and nearly keep it in. Cameron Tucker with good effort, but turns it over to Ryan Marks. Now a two on two shorthanded. Only five seconds of penalty kill time for the Eagles. Fowler with a quick shot. Big blocker save from Williams. Back Another to, one. Back Another to five on, on five Fowler. play. Just as you were saying, Fowler taking punishment here as Ashanta clears are 0 for 5 on their power play chances. Now Fowler sends a body. He's got to be corner. careful. Bryce Corner sends it to the near side below the goal line. Deborah gives chase. 
He will send Engtau into the boards. Bodies colliding heavily here in this third period. Fowler wraps up his man and he oh, tackles he got him. Man. There he is got that him. there he is that him. retaliation that we are talking about. Now Fowler absolutely giving it to one of the Chanticleers down low on the ice. Just picking him up and throwing him onto the ice three or four times. And I assume Fowler is getting <coughs> at least two minutes the original penalty for holding on the tackle. And I think the, the call was going against Coastal Carolina, actually. But Fowler's going to be lucky if he doesn't pick up a double minor. He hauled down that Chanticleer player. And he's pleading his case to John McGill, the linesman, wondering why there was no original penalty on that second hit from behind. But Alex Fowler's going to be lucky if he doesn't pick up an extra minor penalty. He went straight to the bench. I don't think he's getting a... Oh, yep. He's going. And you saw Bob Joyce with the wrap. He's not happy with Alex Fowler. He's not unhappy with the officials. He's unhappy with his yeah. assistant captain. I don't know. I mean, the thing is, is there should be both. And I don't know if there... So I'm just surprised there's only one again. Here's my thing. Alex Fowler completely took down the Sean to clear player. He gets the original holding, no question. But to your point, take one or take both. If Alex Fowler gets an extra minor penalty for the extracurriculars after the original tackle, That's then, fine. One, then one of the Chanticleers needs to go in for jumping on top yeah. of Alex Fowler. Give them the extra penalty, but they should still be sending one of their guys to the box. And I think that's what Ryan Marks is talking to the ref about right now because it's – I mean, he's been getting tossed around all night, and he hasn't gotten any protection from the refs. Realistically, Coastal Carolina should be on the power play after this, regardless of if there's an extra penalty to Fowler and an extra to one of the Chanticleer players that cancels out. But the original holding penalty on Fowler should stand as a power play for the Chanticleers. And it should. And I don't know. I don't really know what to say. I mean, it's an undisciplined call, but he's been... What point do you just have to stick up for yourself because nothing else is going to get done? And I know what that feels like as a player. There comes a point where you, I don't know if take matters into your own hands is the right term, but just to get guys off of you. And the officials are still working everything out. Five minutes is up on the board for Alex Fowler. Five in a game. The officials are not sending him to the locker room. He should be gone for the game. I and have never seen just a five-minute major been given, as you said, Jordan, without the extra game yeah. misconduct. I think it, he has to go. I mean, I got a five-minute game last year. I didn't sit in the box. Now, here's my thing. I'll be interested to see the score sheet at the end of this game because there is no rule that allows an official to give a five minute major for a holding penalty. So if they called holding on Alex Fowler for the original tackle, then they need to give this five yeah. minute major for the extracurriculars just picking up and throwing down to the ice one of the Chanticleer players. I don't see how they're giving Alex Fowler just a five minute major for the original tackle. But it is a five minute power play regardless of how many times the Chanticleers score and this is a huge, huge moment in this dying hockey game. 14.45 left in period three. A five minute power play for the visitors. They are trying to get to 500 on their season, trying to improve to a five and five record. Angtao to the near side for folks. Those two have been a dynamic tandem for the Chanticleers. Walking in Minervini with a big stand up save in the butterfly stood his ground in the crease. And now a slash right into Nothing. the hands of Marks is not gonna be called as he sends it over the crossbar. He and Engtau jaw at each other. And now the Chanticleers come back on the power play. The Eagles have to stay disciplined because the Chanticleers are trying and succeeding to get under the Eagles skin any way they can. Far side into the corner, centering pass blocked away by Minervini, sent out into the near circle, and David Lytle has an avenue down the left wing wall. 
One on two, shorthanded. Smartly just brings it into the boards, killing time. And Coastal Carolina comes back on a three on two. Liam Burns in the high slot shot in and out of the midsection of Minervini and Kaufman has it, can't clear it out. Lytle comes back for support and it's sent off the boards and into the neutral zone for Liam Burns so to settle down. So far so good. They've been keeping the play to the outside and they've been boxing guys out in front of the net. That's what they need to do. Vanderveen from below the goal line sends it into the middle. Colin Bridges trying to glove it down, does so, does not get the hand pass call. So play continues on the near side, up to the blue line. Shot gets blocked away by Kaufman. Good job by Kaufman with the active stick there. Three minutes left in the Eagles major penalty. Austin and Kaufman oh. battling hard, nearly sent into the penalty box was Cameron Tucker on that hit. And it's sent all the way down the ice off a deflection. This is the most solid the PK's been all night. And it has to be if the Eagles it want any chance. absolutely does. I just, I'm still trying to figure out if, if Alex Fowler can come back into the game. My assumption is if he's in the penalty box and someone has to come out on the ice at the yeah. end of this five minutes. So my assumption is he just gets a five minute major and no game misconduct, which I've never seen in ACHA action before. I've never seen it anywhere. I mean, unless you're in, you're in the big leagues having a five minute major for fighting, I've never, I've never seen that, but Play continues. Alex Fowler's going to have to return into this game because there's no one in the penalty box to come out on the ice other than Fowler. But him, yeah. But the Chanticleers will set up out of their own zone. 2.04 left in the Chanticleers major power play. If they score, the penalty does not get taken off the clock. They can score at will, but the Eagles' penalty kill is standing tall so far. Rimmed around the boards to the near corner. Comes up to the half wall. Shot from Tucker gets saved by Minervini and he hangs on to the rebound. And this, go ahead. 11.41 left in period three, 144 left in the major penalty. And you know what, the, the thing is, is Coastal Carolina has been very selfish in carrying the puck into the zone and they've been getting some pucks at the net, but they're not actually setting up their power play. It seems like they're trying to rush it, trying to force it. Like you say, they're trying to score as many times as they can on this power play and Credit for the Eagles, keeping them to the outside, boxing guys out in front of the net, not letting them get those second and third chances in front of the net. Shot goes to the far side post and nearly deflected in on the back door. As you're saying, Jordan, this is a speedy Carolina team as Sakala can't clear it out. So you can be selfish on the break in as the one-timer gets fanned on, but you have to set up shot like they are now. Use that speed to break in, but set it up and pass it around as a big save from Minervini and no rebound is given up. And the one thing on that play was Dan Sakala, he fell down and he got up, but the issue was is he chased the guy into the corner and that left the point shot wide open. That guy can stand on the half wall all he wants. He's not gonna score from there, at least he shouldn't. And But if you're chasing that guy, that, that guy at the point can walk in and take a clean one-timer. A failed clearing attempt from the Eagles and the Chanticleer set up on the far half wall. 1-10 left in their major power play. A tied four to four hockey game with 11 minutes left in period three. Up to the blue line, Angtau with a shot, he scores. Angtau picks up the hat trick. And the Chanticleers get back ahead. Well, the one thing on that play that I would like to see different the Eagles were fine. They had the puck behind the net, but Ryan Marks is sitting deep in the slot rather than out at the point shot in that diamond setup that we talked about. I think he acts more as a screen on Max Minervini rather than coming out that guy, forcing him to make a play. <clears throat> he can walk in and pick his corner with the screen. That's the only thing that was really wrong with that setup on the penalty kill. So Ang Tao with the hat trick, the captain comes up huge. It's a five to four lead for the Chanticleers. And they still have 45 seconds of power play time. Eagles bench wants a call. Sakala, or excuse me, that was David Lytle, literally got handed a stick, his own stick from a Chanticleer player. I do not know how that was, that is not holding penalty. If, if your stick gets taken away from you and handed back to yeah, you, how is there know. not a holding penalty? 
Now players tied up. That's Ryan Marks down here in his attacking zone. And he almost was in. Offsides is negated because Ryan Marks didn't Oh, that was up. high. That was a high hit. And now Bryce Corner taken down on the play. And back comes Coastal Carolina. Angtau already has three and he wants more. Far side shot gets saved by Minervini and we're back to five on five play. Oh. By Usiak by himself. Here comes Kyle Usiak on the breakaway right in. Back here he scores! The flyer of airplanes ties it up at five. Wow. That is a huge response after a five minute major penalty. Only one goal is scored in that five minute power play for the Chanticleers. And I think it was Wyatt Ebner, but regardless of who it was, Kyle Usiak came out of the penalty box and sat in the neutral zone by himself. I didn't hear any stick tapping from Williams. I didn't hear anything from the Coastal Carolina bench. That's what you dream of happening at the end of a penalty kill, but the fact that it actually happened, and good good on the, on the I believe it was Wyatt Ebner, to find Usiak in the neutral zone. Walks in on a clean breakaway. You can't ask for a better opportunity than that, and it ties the game. So that five minute power play in the and the hat trick goal for Brendan Engtau is all for naught. Kyle Usiak ties it back up on the breakaway as he came off the bench to replace Alex Fowler, who I assume is eligible for the rest of this game. As we mentioned, he's the only one who could come back out on the yeah, ice. They're talking on the bench right now. He doesn't know. They're, they're talking to the scorekeeper. I don't understand how you can call a player ineligible after he has a chance to come out of the penalty box and play on the ice. But we'll, we'll see here in the, there's still nine and a half minutes of this hockey game. We're in the double digits in the, in the amount of goals scored in total. As a centering pass comes out to the neutral zone too far away from Brantley Miller. Shots 29 to 30 now in favor of Coastal Carolina. They have taken over the shot lead, but we are still tied at five. Billy Callahan up for Brantley Miller. His shot, stick save, rebound is there in the crease. Where is it? And it's under Williams long enough for a whistle. Wow. And more extracurricular activities ensue. And that was such a good look by Brantley Miller. He walks in and he just waits that extra second and he got it under the shoulder, or under the arm, excuse me, of Williams. And that puck actually bounced behind him and came back out through his pad, I think. And Either way, this game is shaping up to be a fast-paced and physical finish. This is the only game of the weekend for Embry-Riddle. This is not a home-and-home -home series. This is not a two-game set where we play a second game tomorrow. This is for the season series between these two teams, so leave it out all on the ice. Don't be afraid to get a little bit banged up. You've got all weekend to recover before you're back at home next Friday. Take a little bit of punishment, but you gotta get this W for Minervini would be his first of the season. Now Ooh. Bishkoff is shoved down to the oh, ice. And they pushed He's him again. being held on the ice. He got him. Finally, it's called by the back official. Unbelievable how long it took for Alec Bishkoff to be shoved on the ice. It took him three pushes before they got the call there. Other than the tackle that Alex Fowler had, that is the exact same he, play that Fowler got a five-minute major. his arms up like he doesn't know what he did. You know exactly what you did. Only a two-minute minor penalty, but finally that kind of physical play has been called by the official. Alex Fowler's back on the ice. See if he can make up for this. So Embry-Riddle Embry with their first power play chance of this third period. A two-minute minor penalty for roughing to the Chanticleers. Face-off win by Marks. Sends it up to the blue line for Kaufman. Kaufman for Bridges at the top of the umbrella. One-timer by Marks and a huge blocker saved by Williams. Absolutely taking away a pure goal-scoring chance for the captain. Took that out of my book. Colin Bridges, his shot is blocked, hangs onto it at the top of the circle, taken back by Coastal Carolina, and a rolling puck is sent into the Embry-Riddle zone. Well, good job by the by Fowler, 
Bridges, Kaufman, and Marks are all converging on that guy so that he just forced to get the puck out of his own rather than skate it up. Kyle Usiak hard on the four check, but he's too little too late. Sent all the way down by Coastal Carolina again. 70 seconds of power play time for the Eagles. We are tied at five. 7.41 left in period three. Near side for Kaufman over the center ice red line and eventually the attacking blue line. Stops up after he gains the zone, Kaufman does. Waits for support, far side for Ebner. Top of the circle on the right wing. Comes into the corner, centering pass deflected behind the net. Rimmed around the boards and that will get to the Eagles zone with 45 seconds remaining on the power play. 7-17 left in a tied third period. We're all evened up at five. Second unit out for the Eagles. Adrian Debra leaves it for David Lytle. Lytle with a long shot, easy routine save by the glove hand of Williams as if it were a warm up shot. There was no traffic in front of him whatsoever. There's one thing that David does a lot and he loves to shoot the puck. As soon as he gets, he loves to get in on net. On even strength, I think that's the right play, but he's got a little bit more time than he thinks. Give it a second, let some traffic get to the front of the net, and then take that shot. He's David, got a good shot. David Lytle off the faceoff win. Loose in front on the rebound, and Noah Austin can't get it on goal. Kick to the near side corner. Lytle walks into the middle. Backhander! Loose in the crease, and a battle in front will be covered up by Williams on the loose puck. I can't believe they just let, let Lytle walk in by himself. The two penalty killers just kind of opened up. They parted like the Red Sea and let him just walk right into the crease there. That's 6.45 left in period three. Nine seconds of power play time for Embry-Riddle. Noah Austin for the faceoff for the Eagles against Eng Tao for the Chanticleers. Austin face off win, Miller with a shot, goes wide of the far post on a deflection. Five seconds until we're back to full strength. And you heard the audible stick tap that Minervini gave that Williams didn't give on the tying goal from UCF. I was just thinking of that. So we are back to five on five play. Eagles one for five on their power play chances. At the blue line, Ebner slap shot, he scores! Wyatt Ebner! I think that way was Miller. Downtown. I think that was Miller, but Brantley Miller from way downtown. Regardless of who it was, it was a rocket and it was needed. A seeing eye shot. I don't think it got deflected. I didn't hear no. a deflection. A six to five lead for the Eagles with 618 left in period three. I think we can chalk that up as another half power play goal. The second one of the game. Like you know, it was right at the end. But unbelievable shot by Miller. And from my experience as a defenseman, from what I saw up here, Brantley Miller had no reason to take that shot. It looked like there no. were about four or five bodies in front of him. I have no idea how he got that shot on goal, much less in the back of the net. And you know what? He hasn't, he's had a tough game, and, and I don't think that it's ne necessarily his issue. It's just he's playing, a, he's playing defense, not always a defenseman, but that's got to feel so good for him individually. And I know what it's like as a player. You know, you make a couple mistakes and you just kind of think about those. And, you know, now he goes out and he takes a he's, he takes a shot that gives his team the lead. I think that that's awesome for him to kind of get that redemption shift out there. Top line right back out for Embry-Riddle. Alex Faller's out on the ice, so I guess he's eligible. 6.03 left in period three. Eagles lead six to five. Fowler off the half wall bounce. Sends it down low for Marks. Off a couple of bodies and Marks gets it back along the boards. Walks into the middle, gets the shot and it just missed up high. Deborah on the far corner on the rebound. Working one on two. Marks didn't come in soon enough, but he picks up a loose change anyways. Down low for Deborah again. Taking punishment, getting it back up the wall, turned over to the Chanticleers. Back comes Coastal Carolina, Justin Falks right in, wide of the near side post, takes a deflection, comes out in front, and there is that Daytona bounce. Hits a stanchion, comes right out in front, when geometrically it should have gone all the way around the board. Yeah, exactly, and you know, Mario Filardi tried to take the hit, and he missed, but he was all right because they had back checkers. 
Now Filardi lucky there's a blue line in the way as he nearly turned that puck over right at center ice. Five minutes to go in period three. Eagles lead by one in a crazy six to five affair. I wouldn't be surprised if the Eagles start running a one, two, two or trap type four check right now with how this game's been going. And this clock will stop at 4.49 on the icing plate of the Chanticleers. Eagles are back on top on the shot category, 35 to 30. As it stands now, it would be Brantley Miller with the GWG from the blue line. But the Chanticleers want to have something to say about that as Bryce Corner comes in on a good defensive posture. Stopping that slap shot before it made it on Golden Intervini. Coastal Carolina battling on that far corner. Vanderveen can't get it below the slot. And it's dumped off the boards to the neutral zone. Delayed offsides is touched up. And Vanderveen comes in on the four check. Centering cast is a good one deflected Ooh. by Austin who nearly got his head taken off if he had caught that pass, but he just dumped it in. And that is a very undersung pinch by Wyatt Ebner right there. But coaches will preach, get pucker body. He missed the puck, so at the last second he got the body. And not only that, but David Lytle read that and he was back. Lytle with the shot that gets deflected over the crossbar. Two on two, back the other way for Coastal Carolina. 3.48 to go. And there's David Lytle again on a beautiful back check, keeping that play to the outside. Chanticleers battling to get it into the slot. They dump it into the corner instead. Joe McAdams takes down corner in the process. Who's not willing to get up? And the Eagles trying to get it out. Finally on the fourth attempt, they are successful. Carolina stopped at the red line. Dumped back in by Callahan. 3.14 to go in the game. Six to five lead for the Eagles. And it's pitchforked out like a golf shot all the way down. And on rough ice, it is not going to make it to the goal line. Brantley Miller off the far boards. Brought right back in by the Chanticleers on the stick of Miller. And again, he'll just give it to a teal jersey. <clears throat> Dumped off the body of Callahan. No, they're going to say it didn't deflect. At least the linesman said it didn't deflect. He had icing ready to call. The head referee had no clue. So play continues in the Eagles defensive zone. Kenny Ferrara dumps it down low. Centering pass blocked away by Callahan to the blue line. Shot gets through. Stick save Minervini. Rebound there in the crease. And it cannot be cleared out. Second effort, a quick shot blocked out by Kaufman. 2.26 to go in period three. Good job by Turner Kaufman there. Couple really bad turnovers. They have the puck on their stick. Callahan forces it to the far side. Luckily, the Eagles are able to get it on their attacking side of center ice and into the attacking zone. Brendan Engtau smartly high off the glass into the neutral zone. Quick pass on the tape for Compton. He already has one tonight. Two minutes to go in period three. We'll keep an eye on Williams in the net. Down low for Ferrara. Walks in front. Big stick in front by Bryce Corner getting that away from the front of the net. In the feet of Callahan, dumps it down low on another smart play. And now Wyatt Ebner, he not got putting, need, it looked like. Not putting any weight on that right leg to getting to the bench. 94 seconds left in this game. Eagles lead six to four. Engtau, pitchfork to the near side, glove down by corner. And it's taken right back by the Chanticleers. Tucker over the blue line. Williams looking for direction at the bench. 1.17 to go in the game. Up top in the slot. Big save by Max Minervini. Uh-oh. Now the Eagles bench protesting as much as they can. JT Compton ripped the stick out of Bryce Corner's hands and threw it to the neutral zone. Now giving a thumbs up, gesturing nasty to the official. Unbelievable how this is not getting called. I don't get it. I have never seen they're a player. Not even, they're not even paying attention. I have never seen a player get away with making a gesture like that to the official at any point in the game. They're going to send Williams over now. And there's only five players out on the ice, and now the Chanticleers will take their timeout. 
the penalties that have been called, aside from maybe a five minute major, maybe should have been a two minute minor for Faller, the penalties that have been called by the officials, I cannot disagree with, but the penalties that they have let go are just That's, astonishing to me. They're not calling enough. They're very inconsistent. And it has, it changes your play style. I mean, you're not getting protected. You're, you're getting run around. You're getting tossed around. You're going to eventually just start throwing pucks away because you don't want to get your head taken off or get run into the boards from behind. I mean, that's, they're just barely holding on to control of this game. And I, and I should reiterate, it was not as nasty of a gesture I make it out to be as JT Compton. It was, it was not flipping the bird. It was not anything like that. But it was something as simple as taking his glove off and for a solid five seconds staring at the official with a sarcastic thumbs up. Sarcastically, as sarcastically as I can say it, yeah, you're making the right call. Disgusted that he did not get any kind of benefit of the doubt taken down by Bryce Corner. But I've never seen a player get away with some kind of gesture like that to the official. But the stage is set six to five lead for the Eagles. And it is six on five on the ice with the empty net for the Chanticleers. Long shot saved by Minervini on a big screen in front from Andrew Cole. They've 62 got, seconds left in this game. They've got three guys in front of the net and they're running an umbrella with guys on each circle and a guy in the center point. They need, the Eagles need to box guys out in front of the net and open up the view for Minervini. 102 left in period three, a six to five lead for the Eagles. Empty net for the Chanticleers. Coastal Carolina wins the faceoff. They rim it around the boards, down low to the near side at Kareem's. Clock has not started for the past six seconds. And the clock is still frozen at 102 as Adrian Debra brings it out and a diving block. He gets it right back, falling down on the play. Clock has not started, but it doesn't matter as it goes into the empty net and the Eagles will get a seven to five lead. And now they're talk, the scorekeepers are talking to the ref about, I assume the clock. But and I'm not sure who got the last touch on that. Looks like Ryan Marks may have gotten the last piece of it. But I don't know what they're gonna do about this. There's no official replay to figure out the clock, but well, the Embry-Riddle Eagles and Bob Joyce are protesting for six seconds to be left on the clock. The Chanticleers are going to be protesting for 55 seconds left on the clock. They've I put up know. 27 seconds. I don't know. Honestly, about that. I don't. I don't see how there's more half than a, that. Half a minute has gone by in that, and that's what the Chanticleers are protesting. I would say probably 45 seconds should go up on this clock. I only see about 15 seconds being gone on that play but they will leave the clock at 27 seconds. One thing that doesn't change is that Ryan Marks did put one in the empty net. Seven to five lead for the Eagles and Marks wants more, walking down the right wing wall, killing more time. 15 seconds left, Bryce Corner a shot, deflected, loose in the crease and covered up by Williams. And that'll stop the clock with 10.9 on a game that through the first 40 minutes, the Eagles should not have won. Not at all. I mean, it was, I'm, I still stand, it was that save by Max Minervini on the breakaway on the power play in the second period that really turned this game around. And the five minute penalty by Alex Fowler was, could have been a big momentum changer, but the Eagles did a good job killing it off. They only allowed one goal. And Max Minervini will get his first win of the season the Eagles will improve to 8-5-1, 17 points on the season. And the Chanticleers out of Coastal Carolina will fall to 4-6 and six and remain at 8 points through, through 10 games played. Big for Mini Minervini to get this win, stopping 30, or excuse me, stopping 28 of 23, sh or of 33 shots, excuse me. Not a spectacular night for goaltending, but as you said, Minervini stopping that shot, instead of it being that whatever differential it was, five to two, what it would have been, 
And for the first time, it seems, in a game that Minervini starts, the Eagles score more than one goal. They, they put up a full touchdown and an extra point. A 7-5 to five win for the Eagles. As I mentioned, a game that the Chanticleers are probably going to go home to Coastal Carolina thinking that they should have won this game. And I, I wouldn't be able to disagree with that. The Eagles came out to a slow start. They play better than that. They're missing a few key components, but that can't be an excuse. No, not with the depth that's on the team right now. And that's, that's what's such a big difference from last year. This team can still come in and expect to win every single night. And they did, they got it done, maybe not the prettiest way, but the bottom line is, is they got the win and they're on to the next one. Final score here from the Daytona Ice Arena. The Embry-Riddle Eagles prevail on a spectacular come from behind win. Seven to five, they topple the Coastal Carolina University Chanticleers. For Jordan Shepard, I'm Nick Gimbel. We thank you all for joining us here on the Embry-Riddle Eagles Broadcast Network. We will be back here, same time, same day of the week, tomorrow, uh, next week on Friday at 6.30.